We're going to the morgue right now. This is where all of our old newspapers are and all of our old negatives are. And uh, this is the neat stuff. You like to show people this stuff when they're on a tour of the building. These are all the old photo negatives. These are all the bound volumes. This is what we used to research stuff before there was microfilm. And just to keep the paper. 40s, 50s, 30s, 20s. They're really uh, antiques right now, but they're neat to open up and just run your fingers across these things because it's really like touching history. It's one thing to read about history, but it's another thing to touch it. Just because, like I say, it's opening up the past. It's all yellow and it's all old paper, but it's still in good shape. It's not going to deteriorate if you touch it. I mean, you know, you want to treat it kind of gently, but boy, it's nice to see this uh, the old ads, the full page ads we had, all these small stories jammed in here. Yeah, this is something. You can even smell the age on it. Hmm, old newsprint. Um, our Capital Region scrapbook, which runs Monday, wouldn't it be the success that it is without Sid Brown and Charlie Sellers and, and all the guys that took pictures back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, keeping their negatives and keeping them in a uh, orderly fashion. We've got scanners that we can just put them right in, hold them like this. We really should have gloves down here, but we don't have them. Sorry, Sydney. These are cameras that I used while I worked at the cassette. And uh, they're all film cameras. There's no, there's no modern camera here. Everything that went through these cameras had to be developed and printed and just like the, like the old days. Most news photographers that used speed graphics uh, didn't look through the, through the lens, they looked, they looked through the, the finder to uh, set up their shot like this. <clears throat> we had a lot of what bad weather way back in the 50s and I've forgotten what year this is, but let's see. Maybe, well, anyway, it's, it's out in Duanesburg and um, the, the Duanesburg area. And the, the, the snow was so deep that this, this, this man couldn't get anybody to deliver. He couldn't get food delivered or fuel or anything. So um, um, he also had a broken leg. And there he is standing there with a the broken leg. He's got a cane. And what I did, I, I, got, a, I got a hold of um, two planes over at the uh, Duanesburg Airport. I didn't get them, but they, but they were there, and I used to fly them out there. I used, to, I, was, I used to fly a lot out there before I had my own plane, which was at Schenectady Airport. And um, so we, what we did, we uh, took, we were flying to, uh, I was in one plane, and the, the guy that threw this bag of food down was in this one. So he threw the food down, and it landed right next to the guy. And this this picture, this was, this, this picture was used every place, front page of uh, New York Times of any. There was just it just a, it tells the whole story. Sidney was a creative photographer. He'd find a, a lot of different ways to get a lot of different angles, and we used to kid him that you know. We used to kid a lot of the photographers that there's not been one cow or duck in our whole area that hasn't had his picture in the paper because they'd rely on some of the animal shots once in a while. But now these guys always were on the lookout for people too, people doing different things. It could be a bunch of kids in a fire hydrant during the summertime, people raking leaves in the fall or doing any kind of winter sport. Sydney was a big winter, still is I think a big winter uh, sports guy. I mean, look for the unusual uh, angles. Picture of um, uh, up in, oh, what's the name of the place up there? At, um, it's, oh, the Great Escape. Uh, the Great Escape has this high, this jumping, it has these people jumping into the pool from way up high. And I, uh, I, I thought that I would like to get a shot being on top of them so I could see the pool and see the jumpers. So I like to talk to people, that, that, that made me feel good. And I, because I felt that I was, I was working to make the Gazette look good. 
and that was important to me. That's what I wanted to do. I'm not, I didn't want to make myself look good. I wanted to make the paper look good because it was a, a good paper and there were good people working there. I kind of grew up at the Gazette. Um, I had my first photograph published when I was 11 years old and my dad, Ed Schultz, was a photographer from 1960 to 1987. Uh, you know, I learned a lot from my father. Uh, you know, uh, we had a dark room at home, and my bedroom was right next to the dark room. So um, he uh, he always kept me busy with his sideline of you know legal negligence and uh, for lawyers and Union College and whatnot. So I really learned how to print really well, and um, and he just showed me a lot about cameras. And so did Sid Brown. I mean, they they took me under their wings and. Uh, uh, it was fun, you know. Every day is a, n a new adventure in this job. Okay, we're in the new dark rooms uh, from 1990s, and this uh, is a film room in here. And uh, after an assignment, uh, the photographer would come in with his roll of films uh, and put them onto these reels. And, you know, they would go, they, you would be in the complete darkness now. But um, you would you would feed these these the, the film onto the reels uh, very carefully here. If I can remember how to do it, it's been 20 years. But anyways, you would roll them on. They would be on the film holders, and then you would go into these tanks and feed them into the, the tanks here. Um, when we went into digital, I was in, in, the, in the filming uh, side of it for years and years, and uh, I think uh, I always felt that um, when the digital camera came out, it kind of took all the fun out of the suspense of uh, taking the pictures. I, you know, I'd, I'd go to an assignment, and big assignments, small assignments, a lot of sports, and I'd be always saying, you know, I wonder if I got that picture, or if I got that picture, you know? And uh, then I'd soup my film and see what I got. But now with digital, you know, you just look at the back of your camera and, and, and it's all there. This, the element of surprise is a lot less, but I'll tell you, it's, it's a brave new world with the uh, digital stuff nowadays in the newspaper industry. Yeah, we started the Capital Region Scrapbook somewhere around 2002, 2001. It was a neat way for people to send in pictures and we would get them in the newspaper and tell the stories with pictures that people had. After a while, people stopped sending them in and we uh, kind of started to rely on Sid Brown's negatives, Charlie Sellers' negatives that we have in our, our morgue. And that was a great little treasure trove that very few newspapers, I think, have these days. We were able to put Go into the microfilm, find things that we wanted to sort of chronicle, get the negatives, scan them in, and they were just crisp, brand new pictures again that uh, we were able to put in the paper. And people have really responded. We hear that a lot of people like it. It's all spooled up and ready to go into the past. It's our own way back machine. You can get a headache if you're on this too much, though. April 6, 1987. Through a bridge collapses. Sydney was right out there that day, and well, that's a shot he got. There was a great deal of rain, and there was a lot of flooding. And uh, when I got up on Sunday morning, I knew that uh, I had to go out and cover the rain and the flooding someplace and um, I wasn't sure where I would go but I I, I started to drive uh, uh, out to uh, out toward Amsterdam and I, I, I continued on to the, where the Schaharie Creek goes under the under the throughway and um, and also uh, I, I, I drove down on Route 5S and I was, I was talking to a couple of firemen that were standing on Route 5S and they said to me that nobody, all the bridges are, are, are closed in Montgomery County except for the Thruway Bridge. 
So uh, I said, okay. And um, all of a sudden, the three of us were standing there, two firemen, myself, and we heard this, this rumble, this t awfully loud screeching noise. And we, we, uh, we looked up and, and the bridge started to uh, topple and it, it went down so um and it happened very fast and we did see we did see a couple of uh, cars flying through the air and we saw a, a trailer truck go down so that was that was uh that was the uh, the bridge collapsed at that time I, I enjoyed working with people. I enjoyed seeing people. Every place I went, I would tell them my name and I would and they, they would remember it and uh, we, we, uh, they, they were friendly. And I was friendly. They liked that. Uh, just some, some gimmicky pictures. I, I, and I, you know stuff like this with a, a fireman with a cigar in his mouth with a blazing fire in the background. that's, that's I, people used to like to see pictures like this, and I knew I knew that, that that people liked these pictures, you know, and they liked pictures that made them smile. And this would, I think that that people would see pictures that I take and say, "Oh, that's a, a great shot." And I have people tell me nowadays that after I haven't seen people in 30, 40 years, and they say, "Oh, I remember the picture you took in Channel 13 studio with the girls." falling down after they were supposed to be putting on a show. <laughs> well, I'm glad I made prints.